Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So here's a quick video on a practical plan you can follow to publish your very first game. Now the idea for this video actually came from a comment that I saw. It's on the video where I talk about 7 game dev mistakes that can destroy your games. Which by the way the video has chapters in case you want to jump into each of those mistakes. So here's the interesting comment by Callum which says Start working on my first game after finishing your Kitchen Chaos tutorial about a week ago. In case you don't know Kitchen Chaos is my free complete 10 hour course. It's great for beginners and even for more intermediate users. And then I've watched many videos from Jason Wyman and yourself, so I have the idea of starting with some simpler games first hammered into my brain, planning to get this first one done by the time the next Team Fest comes around. And yep, right away, I do think this is an excellent, very practical plan. For your first proper game, keep it extremely simple, something that you can make in about two months, participate in the Steam Festival, and then launch the game. As for myself, I participated in the last Steam Festival with my own upcoming Steam game, Thank You Guardians. Like I said in my reply, go for it, the plan does sound great, make a game until October, release a demo on the next fest, spend the month afterwards improving the game based on demo feedback and release in November or December. If you follow that, you will learn a ton. One thing that I've mentioned a bunch of times is how finishing games is actually a skill. Anyone can learn how to make games and anyone can start making any game, but taking it to the finish line is another skill entirely, and it's one that just like with any other skill you gain with experience. A lot of people think that just starting games is enough so they have dozens of unfinished prototypes but nothing really complete. Now I truly believe that one of the best things that ever happened to me was sort of randomly, which is how I started working with Flash and the way the Flash gaming scene worked, that was all about small, extremely small focused games. So in the 5 years that I was making Flash games, I finished about 40 complete games, and then I had dozens more of unfinished prototypes. I truly think that experience was extremely valuable. Completing all of these games really taught me how to finish games and finish that skill. That is why my advice to people is both start and finish games. Don't just keep making unfinished prototypes. If you do, then you will simply never learn all the skills that are required to actually finish a game, all the things that only come up on the final stage. Things like polish, options menus, save systems, localization, input methods, working with the Steam backend, or really just learning how to create satisfying endings for your games. If you never take a project to completion, then you never go through all these steps. Then the other thing that Cal mentioned that I very much agree with is participating in the Steam Next Fest. This one is coming out in October. Participating in a festival is something that is absolutely essential nowadays. If you want to find success, you need to worry about marketing. And a crucial marketing step nowadays is simply participating in a Steam Festival. Once again, going through this step, this is going to teach you a lot. You will get your first taste of public feedback, which is both a great and a terrible thing. Learning to listen to feedback and be able to identify what are the things that you should pay attention to and learning how to withstand sometimes some very harsh criticism. Learning that is yet another extremely valuable skill that you definitely must gain. And once again, you only have the opportunity to develop this skill if you take a project to completion. So if you're the kind of person who tends to get stuck in analysis paralysis, then here's a very simple, very practical plan that you can follow. And before we get to the actual plan, if you need any assets to make your first game, thankfully there are two excellent humble bundles running right now. There's one with tons of visuals, effects and animations. All of them in a realistic style, for example this excellent weapon pack. There's a bunch of realistic gorgeous explosions. You've got some villages, elves, landscapes, a ton of strange creatures, some more landscapes. And also packed with a ton of animations, over 2300. So this is a huge pack with tons of visuals. It's worth 2500 bucks and you can get it for just 30. Or if you need some sound effects, here's another huge one. Again, this one has over 10,000 sound effects files and over 20 hours of music. Everything from some retro ones, there's some HUD VFX, a bunch of voices, some medieval, some Asian. There's lots of music, soundscapes and tons of stuff. Again, with a huge discount, just 20 bucks. Go ahead and check out both bundles linked in the description. And just one more note, Unity actually invited me over to Unite, which is happening this year in Amsterdam in November. This is their conference, which is finally coming back in force this year. The past few years it was either remote or it was split into tons of tiny conferences. This year there's a really big one. The tickets are available right now, it should be fun, so hopefully I'll see a bunch of you there. Back to the practical plan. So step one, either take whatever project you're working on right now or come up with a brand new project. Importantly, make sure you pick a very small scope. So don't try to make the next GTA or Skyrim. Pick something you think you can make in about a month and a half. As usual, people always underestimate time. So if you pick something that takes a month and a half, chances are it's going to take you about three months. So the goal is pick something that is slightly more complex than something like Flappy Bird, but not too complex. Once you have the core game idea decided, then step two is to quickly prepare a Steam page and set it as coming soon. This step will basically teach you how to get familiar with the Steam backend, what assets are required in order to make a Steam page and how to do it well, learning how to make a great Steam page with a bunch of GIFs and some really nice text and bullet points, that is yet another skill and once again another one that you don't gain if you don't take parts to completion, 
Related to that is kind of a bonus for this step, which is go ahead and start learning about marketing. Maybe start experimenting with some devlogs or shorts, maybe some GIFs or Reddit posts. Start researching about indie game marketing and experiment with it to try to gather some wish lists. Although again, at this point, the goal with this game is not financial success, it is simply learning. So don't worry too much about the numbers, just experiment and see what works. Go ahead and watch my video on marketing and follow the links that I mentioned there. For a specific timeline, this step should be done roughly within the first month. So before the end of August, you should have a public coming soon page and start gathering wishlists. Then step three is work on the game and get a demo fully playable by October. Although sadly, actually Steam has a really short registration deadline, registering for the October festival that already ended in mid-July. So technically you cannot right now go ahead and register for that next fest, but you can definitely publish a demo whenever you want. So while you cannot participate in the festival official, you can definitely make a demo build and publish it at the exact same time. Again, since the goal with this plan is to start and complete your first game, then this is not a problem. You will learn how the Steam backend works in order to make a demo, which is knowledge you will absolutely require for more serious projects. So the plan for step three is to publish a demo on October 9th. This means you have to have your game playable by this point. It needs to have a beginning, it needs to have an end. Now, it doesn't need to be super polished or necessarily have all the content, but it does need to be a satisfying, if short, experience. Again, working on this demo will give you a taste of what it's like to complete a mini game. In order to have a successful demo, make sure you watch my video on how to get a wishlist and make a good demo for the Steam Festival. Then as the festival rolls around, you'll listen to all the feedback from the demo and you analyze all the analytics. Take that and build your game bit by bit until the very end of October. By then you should have a near complete game. Then just spend some time polishing the game, polishing everything that you have, adding all kinds of tiny animations and effects that make the gameplay feel very satisfying. And finally, step four is either in November or early December, you publish your game. Although keep in mind, this step is not just pushing a single button. The goal is release the game and then listen to player feedback. So read all the reviews, read all of the forum posts. If there are playthroughs on YouTube, go ahead and watch all of those. It's really important to see how people actually play your game rather than just reading text. The goal with this step is basically learning how to analyze feedback and figure out what part of that feedback you should take in order to make your next game as best as it can be. Note how in this entire plan, there's absolutely no mention of money or sales success, anything at all. The goal with this plan is simply learning, that's it. For your first game, learning should be your only goal. Any money that you make is really just a nice bonus. Once you have gained the knowledge from following this plan, then for your second game, you can hopefully put everything you learn into action and make a much better game with much better marketing, which indeed may yield some financial results. Now, just one more note for this. I should say that this plan is meant for people who are slightly above the complete beginner level. If you are a complete absolute beginner, if so, then instead of starting with this plan, I would recommend starting with something quite a bit more simple. For complete beginners, first of all, I would recommend following my free 10 hour course. If you go through the whole thing and you pay attention, then by the end, you will have gained a ton of knowledge. And of course, don't assume that you can go through a 10 hour course in just 10 hours. The goal is learning, it is not just blindly watching. For me, it took me several years to learn all the knowledge contained in this course. So if you'll manage to learn it in about a month or several months, that still means you're doing much better than me. After that, I basically recommend what I covered in my seven steps to become a game dev video. I recommend making some super simple games, things like Flappy Bird or Space Invaders. These projects will help you get familiar with the engine. Then just go ahead and make one or two one month games, meaning games that take just one month to complete. So these should be slightly more complex than things like Flappy Bird, but again, nothing too complex. Always keep the scope in check. And after you go through those, then you're ready to follow the plan in this video. And since we're talking about a plan to release Steam games, if you found this video useful, you can help me by adding my own game, Dinky Gardens, to your wishlist. Also, don't forget the two excellent bundles in case you need some assets or sound effects. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.